just thought I'd show you my latest project, which is going to be a rocket stove for my shed. And it's November here and it's getting a little bit chilly. So I decided I was going to build something, which I've kind of been planning for a while, did quite a bit of research, looked at quite a lot of videos on YouTube. The, uh, the idea is really, get yourself a gas bottle, 12 kilogram one I've got here. I will be building a bigger one later in the year for my cob house. Um, but basically, uh, get the brass fitting off the top, well, empty it of gas first, obviously. Uh, then I filled it with water, emptied it of water, that pushes all the rest of the gas out of it. Uh, then I ground the top off, which is there. Uh, what I did then was, um, which I didn't intend to do, was cut this slot at the side because uh, I bought some four inch box section, which cost me about £40. Uh, maybe a little bit big, maybe I should have bought the 75mm, not really sure, I shall find out once I've finished. Um, so what I've basically done is chop that at a 45 degree angle, which is uh, this one on the left here is my, uh, which will be the feeder pipe, which will be another pipe coming off that, uh, which will feed the wood in and the, the end hole there will uh, just be for lighting and the other part, this part uh, will go up inside the gas bottle basically up up here up and about an inch off the top of that a little drawing over here which you may like to see which gives you a, a bit of a basic idea of what goes on uh, it just kind of shows you the where the wood goes in where the fire actually is and what happens to the, uh, the flue gases once they come out and, and go around up to the top of the bottle then back down to the bottom of the bottle before they come out uh, I'm then going to run this uh, the flue section here through cob uh, on the floor uh, which will act as a bit of a heat sink and take any of the uh, take all the rest of the heat out of the flue gases so you don't actually really lose anything uh, so that should make it a little bit um, a little bit more efficient than the con a conventional uh, gas bottle stove which most people have built uh, I did build one last year out of cob which did kind of work but it was it's a bit oh, I don't know, it was a bit hard work really to be honest with you there's a lot of curing time for the cob and and all the rest of it and, and it cracked and it was quite heavy and cumbersome to move around uh, so I'm still in the process of uh, chopping all the bits up which I have been chopping up on uh, my evolution saw which is which I can uh, recommend you buying because they are absolutely fantastic and this steel uh, is three mil thick and it flies through that it's uh, actually really quite good so uh, as and when I get um, a little bit further on as it's getting a bit late tonight I shall uh, post another video Okay, so uh, today I'll be back at it. So um, what I've done today is I've, I've pretty much just put all the bits of steel together that I've, that I've done, uh, welded them all up, which I'm not absolutely brilliant at, but you know I'll have a bit of a go at it. Uh, so that's kind of made up. That'll fit inside this slot. I've just got a piece of wood in the bottom of there at the moment. So basically, tight fit, but that'll sit in there like that. I don't know if you can see so that's going, to, that's going to sit in there like so as you can see it kind of sticks out the top a little bit so that the uh, the dome of the gas bottle uh, will sit just about an inch above that that'll be my, uh, my wood chute going in uh, this will be where I'll light it and clean out any ash and bits of nails and, and whatever I should make a cap to go on there in a, in a little while uh, I'm going to make some little supports in there now to hold that up uh, and that'll be it really for today Okay, I've uh, pretty much welded up uh, most of it in now. Not all, not all of it's very pretty. To be honest with you, that's just a thing I'm going to use there, I think. Um, so yeah, that's what it's going to look like from the outside. Uh, from the inside, I've blobbed. I'm going to say blobbed. I do mean it. Uh, a bracket down the bottom there. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, just to support it uh, while it's inside. So now I'm just going to weld the top back on. Uh, my wife has just told me that she requires a flat plate on the top so she can put a kettle on it. So uh, that's something I'll do once I've got the top welded back on. And uh, we'll continue after that. The fire's nearly finished now. Uh, it's all been welded up. I've put the uh, piece of flue on, which is just a piece of four inch boxing. And it's been welded up and uh, put a flat plate on so we can put a kettle on. Um, just about to take, drag it outside now and do a test on it. There's about, um, well, just slightly over two and two and a bit meters of a um, flue pipe welded onto that there. Hopefully, that'll be enough to create a, a draw. Uh, so after this, we'll just 
I'll just uh, I'll just get some fire into it and see whether it actually works. Okay, I did a uh, test burn last night, uh, which failed. For some reason, it, it was uh, running uh, the other way, as in uh, I was building the fire in the small tube, the feeder tube, and it was just coming out where I've got that masking tape over the end. Uh, so I did a little bit of research uh, online last night just to see if I could figure out the problem, uh, which I think a lot of it was saying that the uh, about the, the internal flue being insulated helps because it uh, obviously keeps the the heat in the burn tube uh, a lot hotter and therefore it draws a lot quicker. Uh, and after a couple of measurements, I've noticed that the uh, the top of the, the burn tube, the the flue as it were. Uh, is only about three quarters of an inch from the top, which I think may be a little bit too close. So I'm going to chop that down. Uh, what I've done at the moment is I've just kind of made a little bit of a, a skin to go around it just, with, a, with a, just, just got a flat plate on it, and I've just used some perlite in there just to try and give it some insulation value, which hopefully should work. It's a bit crude, but uh, it seems to have worked. So I'm going to put the top back on. Although I'm only going to mask, I'm only going to put a bit of duct tape on it just to see whether it will. Uh, will actually draw uh, before I actually weld it back on in case I need to make any other further improvements. Uh, so yeah, the uh, the quest continues to get this thing to bloody work. Okay, there's been a few modifications that I've made to the rocket stove now, uh, just due to having the flue horizontal uh, sitting at the bottom, bottom of the gas bottle just didn't work. It actually worked the opposite way. It was drawing air in through the flue and blowing it back out through the feed tube, which isn't great obviously. Uh, and obviously caused me to have a lot of smoke in my shed. Uh, so what I've decided to do is, uh, we've had a bit of a think about it, did a bit of research online, and I found out that maybe it needs to go up uh, and out through the roof of my shed rather than through the wall of my shed, which is what I wanted originally. The uh, insulation around the riser in shot inside the bottle makes a massive difference. It actually roars now. Uh, I did a bit of a test on it yesterday just roughly, I basically tacked that um, upstand of a uh, box section on uh, and then gaffer taped around uh, the joint and around the top of the bottle, which actually surprisingly worked really, really well. I had it running for about 10 or 15 minutes and I got about 200 degrees on the bottle, which was great. Uh, and, and only about 90 degrees on the, uh, on the top of the flue, which is obviously means that most of the heat is uh, coming out through the bottle. So I'm just about to weld the top back on, I've just tacked it in place for now. Uh, so once I've done that, I shall spark it up outside and uh, we'll, we'll uh, show you what it, how it works. I think it's going to be quite quite good in the shed, to be honest with you. Uh, especially when that back edge around the flue uh, and, the back of the, and the back of the bottle will actually be um, set into a big lump of cob, which I'm going to put in the shed just as a heat sink, just so, well basically I don't waste any heat going up through the flue. Uh, and then it all goes into the cob, and, and I don't waste anything at all, really. Uh, so my wife's happy. It means she can carry on doing her jewellery making with, uh, without having to wear fingerless gloves and hats and scarves and stuff. But uh, So I'll fire it up in a little while, uh, once I've welded this top back on, and uh, I'll post that video. Okay, I've uh, welded it all back up now. <clears throat> so I've just put some kindling wood inside there, a bit of cardboard and this bit of paper, just to see what happens. Getting a bit of smoke at the moment, really. oh, it's not, it's not lit. Oh, dear. It's going now. Now the fire there in and installed, so you can see it's, uh, it's roaring quite nicely. It's about 220 degrees on the top, 
range up to about 280 that it's been up to when it's been roaring for a little while. Uh, like I say, I've sent the flue up and through the roof. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to seal the roof because it started to rain, which is awesome. But yeah, job done. A little bit tatty, obviously. You know, if I built it all again, it'd be a lot tidier. It wouldn't be so much uh, splattery weld all over it where I've cut things down and welding them back on and all the rest of it. But as a workshop heater, works pretty fine. Quite happy with it. Yeah, super job.